To understand what's happening with Greece and the Eurozone, think about a dinner party. If you're cooking just for yourself and your spouse, it's easy. You make something you both like. But if you've got guests, things get harder. If you need to accommodate a vegetarian, and someone who's gluten-free, and someone with a soy allergy, your options get really limited. And that's the problem with Europe's idea of having a whole bunch of countries all use the same currency. So Greece's economy is in a disaster. A quarter of the population is unemployed, and it has this very high debt burden. Normally, if you've got really high unemployment, what happens is that a country makes its currency cheaper by printing extra money. That makes its products cheaper on world markets, it makes it a more attractive tourist destination, and it means that foreign investors can get great bargains. But if unemployment's really low, a country likes to have an expensive currency. That increases people's purchasing power, and it keeps prices down. And in Europe, you have a bunch of economies that are really different. A price of euros that's appropriate for Greece, where they have a 25% unemployment rate, is way too low for Germany, where the unemployment rate's below 5%. And Greece's problem is that it's small, poor, and geographically isolated from the rest of the Eurozone. It's like the only vegetarian at the barbecue, except when it comes to currencies, there's no side dishes. And so there's plenty of specific decisions we can second guess, plenty of things Greece did and various banks did that we can question. But fundamentally, having all these countries come to a dinner party with only one dish on the menu was a mistake. The euro was a project that Europe set about on for really political reasons. It was a symbol of their determination to have peace on the continent. But they didn't really take the economics of it seriously. So Greece joins the euro in 2001, and initially it works out great for Greece because all of a sudden everyone was like, yeah, sure, let's, let's lend the money. Um, so they borrowed lots and lots and lots of euros, except that didn't change the fact that their economy is a lot weaker than some of the other European countries. So to really work, you would need a much, much, much closer union where you had big financial transfers coming from the richer places to the poorer places all the time. In the United States, the poor states like Kentucky, Mississippi, Alabama, they're constantly getting money from the richer states like Massachusetts, California, New York, through the welfare system, through Social Security, through Medicare, through Medicaid. And, you know, people may sort of complain about this or that program, but we don't dispute the idea that it's all one country, so money's going to circulate around. Um, Europeans, you know, they just don't feel that way. Germans are willing to support poor German people, but they don't want to support Greek people with their tax dollars. So they're kind of like halfway integrated in a way that doesn't really work.